Hi, I'm Paul Brody, and this is my shop. Mitch is behind the camera as usual, thank you. And we have a segment today on Aramaki. I know most of you have never heard about Aramaki, but I'll explain a little bit, a little bit about that. We're gonna make a swing arm. I've got a swing arm off a stock bike, which has been cut. The cross tube is off it. If you wanna know what an Aramaki is, we'll look right here. This is a 1970 350 Aramaki, and right here, it's the same swing arm. So we're, we're using a swing arm off this style of a bike, which is 50 years old. This is, this is very hard for, hard for me to make because it's swaged. There's been a large press with a lot of tons, and I think they put an extra tube or something inside, and then they squash it and they bend it as well. I can't do that. So I like to use this piece and this has to be extended. This is inch and a half chromoly. It's 095. You can see it's a nice thick wall. And we're going to machine this down. We're going to add a tube on. We're going to weld it round. And then this here is the cross tube. We're gonna miter these two tubes, put it on there, use the surface table, and we're gonna build a swing arm. So what I wanna show you here, the first thing we're gonna do is go to the mill. I haven't bead blasted off the paint here. I've filed this surface flat. That was fairly flat, but when I start to file this, you can see how it's a bit hollow on each side, so it's not flat. So what I did on the other one, I put it on the mill, and I took a, a little skim cut with a fly cutter. So let's go to the mill now and I'll do the same to this one as I did with this one. So we'll take this out now and I'm gonna show you what comes next. So, I have to machine this down. So one thing I wanna do is I wanna see where the bend actually stops. So if I look in the light, it looks to me right about there. So I'll make a mark with my felt pen. We're gonna go over to the lathe. I'm gonna hold this in the chuck and I'm gonna machine from here to here. Let's say I machine from here to here. And then I cut this off and then this tube is gonna slide over. It's gonna be a nice, a tight fit. I'm gonna change the compound. I'm gonna put a slight angle on it so that we can cut a little taper on the very end of the tube. So probably three degrees, something pretty small. We'll go back to the workbench. I've got my micrometer. I got a telescoping gauge. We're gonna figure out the ID, what it is. Okay, that's my size. 1.3115. So we're gonna go back to the lathe now. Gonna hold that in the chuck. This is gonna swing around because it's off center. Obviously there's a bend and then we're gonna machine a section about that long. I'm at three, one, one, two. So I need to take off half a thou. So I'm gonna sand that. There you go, one, one, five. Okay, that one's good. Now we just have to do the other one. We'll go off to the belt sander now. We'll put a nice, a nice easy chamfer on there so it helps it to feed into the larger tube. I've got some press lube here. This is what you use when you're on the hydraulic press sometimes and you've got interference fit and you want it to go in smoothly. So it's a lubricant. There you go, just a little bit. I'll go inside. 
So it should start to go on there. That's a nice fit. That's exactly what I wanted. So that is that size on size when, when the OD of the smaller tube is exactly the same as the ID of the larger tube, that's a size on size fit. So we do the same thing on number two. Now this one's, the, this one's a little bit looser, just a touch looser, but there you go, it's still going on tight. That's good, I'm very happy with that. So next step is a little bit of TIG welding. We'll go over to the welding table now. Okay, it's all welded up. So the arms are the same length, so I've got my, my combination square and I set it up right like that. See, I made a little, little mark right there. So when I put the, the second arm in there, I've got a way to double check it. Oh, look at that. It's out about a quarter, almost a quarter of an inch. So it's a good thing we checked. Oh, it just fits, look at that, nice. So I shouldn't have to put too much force on it with something this big. And that is too much, so it's gotta come back just a little bit, just a touch. There we go, that's good for me. I've got an axle, I've got a, a dummy axle. This is the same size as the hub. We'll put the axle in. Always want to have the axle all the way forward. That's the dummy axle. This is the other side. Had to machine up a spacer just so I can make this process work. This rectangle here is the cross tube and I've, I've got the tube cut to size. That's my, that's my rear tire, so I've got clearance on either side. I'm just looking at, to see that it's equal. And that looks pretty good there. I'm gonna make a, make a line right down here. There we go. It looks like 11 degrees. So, in class, if I'm doing a class, I do M11. M stands for mitre. This is the easiest way to mark it. Put a combination set right up to the corner, like that. Press down, make your mark. So what this does is I can, I can take out this and I can put the next one in and I have to come up against the stop. I can't have a space there. I need to go back against the stop, put in the extra V block, and then I make it tight. So that's gonna work for both sides. Edging up is a two-handed job. So I, as, I, as I pull the hole saw down, I'm edging up to the line a little bit more. That's good, I'm gonna lock the table here, lock the x-axis, and, and we'll take a cut. I'm on the second side now, we're gonna mitre that. And because I have a stop here, that means I don't have to put any felt pen mark. I don't have to edge the whole saw up to it or anything. I just, I put it in, I clamp it tight, I make my cut. Off to the belt sander next. Just 
check again. And that looks pretty good. So I'll go to the lathe now. I'll take I'll take the coating off of this and then we'll set it up on the surface table and we'll do some tacking. Here is the surface table and this is, is the cross tube for the swing arm. We're going to use the head tube holder again. That's going to hold the cross tube. So we'll take off the clamp and the cone. The cross tube, the cone. We've got the ramping system here. We talked about that last video. Put it on, lock it, pull it. That will not move now. So I've got this here. That can't go forward. So what I need to look for here is equal spacing on both sides. And I'm happy with that. So I need to hook up the ground clamp now to the surface table. And then we'll do some tacking and then I can weld it. All right, it's tack welded. Okay, weld it up. Now we have to miter the cross tube. It's a curved tube that fits around the back tire. Here's the cross tube. It's chromoly. It's a little, a little less wall thickness. It's 065. So that could go something like, like that. That's a hacksaw line right there. And then we're going to miter right there and right there. So can you see how it's it's slanting down a little bit. So we're gonna loosen the vise. See how we give it a little tap. How's that looking? That looks pretty good. So this side has a bit off it. We can go from here, we can go to the line and see if that's level. And it's not quite, so I'll give it a little tap. There we go. That looks pretty level. One curve too. Let's go see how it fits. Oh, I like that. That looks pretty good. Oh, look at that, it's too wide. Okay, so it's still a little bit wide, but I still have to weld in the plate. And I seem to remember last time that when I welded in the plate, even though I had, had the, I'll call this a, a bridge tube, even though the bridge tube was in there, it still pulled in. So this is good. Maybe I'm gonna put a little bit of tension on this anyway. So my next thing to do is to take a piece of cardboard and to cut out a template for the sheet metal that goes in there. I've got some 16th inch sheet metal and that's going to be, that's going to make this swing arm very strong. So I draw a line on either side. So I want to go a little less than halfway. I'm just guessing here where I want to be. That fits pretty good.
So what I have to do now is to uh, have to belt sand off this off the black. That's an oxide because this is hot rolled sheet steel. It's got the got the black on it. And then once I do that, weld it up, check the alignment, we're good. I got a belt sander here. I got this from Tom Ritchie. When I went down to see him in 1984, looked around his shop and this was lying on the floor and I said, what's that? He said, that's my old belt sander. And I said, is it for sale? And so I got it for 30 bucks. Still use it all the time. Thanks, Tom. So I'm just gonna hold, this is hard to hold by hand, so I'll just use a C-clamp here. And all I'm doing is taking off, just making the, the real edge shiny. Okay, we're good. So I, I got a piece of metal, that's just to hold it down while I put a little tack on each corner. Okay. We'll do some welding now, see what happens. So one thing when I'm TIG welding, sometimes I see how far I have to go and I just make sure that I know that I can go the whole way. Okay, the brace is welded in. Oh, look at that. It's just a little bit. I, I can pull that in. That's not bad. I'd rather have it a little bit wider than a little bit narrower. So next step is to see on the surface table how we did. It's got a little bit there. We can, we can pull that down. Okay, so almost touching the table there, almost. Just a touch, but I can fix that up. Thank you very much for watching our video. Hope to see you again. Stay safe.